All right, guys, we are live again. Let me just make sure my feed is going. We're going to be working on this dragon. Uh, again, if you guys are here already. Um, so, uh, I, you guys, I, made, I was live making the dragon a couple, like, was it yesterday? Two days ago? I don't even remember. And um, we realized it was a little bit too big. It came out, um, it came out too big. So then I went to FedEx and I had my uh, pattern they created shrunken down a little smaller. But um, I think actually it was a printing error when I got home. I think what they did was they um, accidentally hit fit the screen, and I also shrunk it down smaller. So I think it um, I think it was an error technically on their side that I didn't notice until after I already built it. So now I shrunk it down one more time. My fear is that it's actually maybe a little bit too small this time, but um, you know that's part of uh, figuring this out. So, uh, I'll show you the other two bodies for those of you who missed the other one. This is the original dragon body. Pretty humongous. Definitely turned out way too big, okay? This was take two. That was just, it's just like two inches. You saw it in my Instagram post if you follow me on Instagram, at Adam Krutinger. Um, so you can see the, the size difference. It's much closer to what I'm looking for, but still, after it's covered and with the arms and legs hanging off, I know it's just still going to be a little bit too big. So, um, I'm putting it together one last time, but last time I traced the pattern and cut out the pattern and put it all together all in one sitting. This time I'm going to be a little bit, it's going to be a lot faster because I already traced it all. Sorry, I'm trying to also do... Uh, check my connection. I'm um, I already traced it all. I already cut it all out So all I have to do is glue it together. So and that's what we're going to be doing right now. I'm using my trusty um, Master glue it's contact cement a lot like barge But I like this more because I can it's something I can get locally, which is really handy for me. Actually. I'm almost out I have to get some uh, Some more but uh, I have to turn on my uh, shop ventilation as well. Hey Google turn on shop vent you got it. Turning on the shop vent. Pretty fancy, huh? Okay. So I've got uh, this guy going, which does a really good job. The, the fumes kind of uh, tend to sink more, so that's why uh, a lot of people use a downdraft table, which I don't have that. I started making one. Um, I'll probably finish it someday, but I realize it might be a little too clunky for uh, the shape of my table and the way it is right now. But... Um, Let's just get into it. Oh, and I did something different too. Something I've never done before in uh, building a puppet. Not that it's like that fancy, but the special lining technique. Um, I've talked about something similar. It's called blocking. There's way to, ways to do that kind of um, blocking through sewing, which is something I have done and talked about before, particularly if you watch my Baby Shark live stream puppet build on YouTube. Um, or if you, um, no, that's the only place, I think. That's pretty sure that's the only place. But anyway, what I did with this is I glued the fabric to the foam and then cut the foam out. So it's going to be pre-lined. You have to do some fancy gluing because you want to make sure you glue the fabric as well. Now, this is not necessarily the perfect, best, most ideal way to, to do that. But it's a quick way if you're uh, in a hurry and in a pinch and you want it to be kind of nice inside. Um, and I'll tell you one thing, it is, it's glued to, it's, it's like a layer of, um, it is, it's like a lining, uh, that's completely perfectly adhered to the fabric, uh, to the foam. So it's really nice. So anyway, uh, I'm just going to get right into it. Starting to glue this up. So actually, let me put those other bodies in the background too, so people kind of know where we are as far as this build is concerned. You see those? That's not bad. I'm gonna move back a little further. How about that? There we go. There's one. There's two. Put these here. There you go. You can kind of. And then I'll cover it up with my body where I'm sitting, so you can't see it anyway. Perfect. Okay. Now let's get into it. So again, this is going to come together much faster 
um, since I'm just gluing it. And also, it's the third time I've put this pattern together, so I've really got the uh, process down. Although I did do some slight alterations to the pattern since I put it together twice already. I was able to true it up. And I always true it up, do a lot of truing to the pattern before I um, print it out and start putting it together. But in the act of putting things together, you find other spots that maybe uh, you missed. They just didn't anticipate being uh, a problem. So, that's handy that that's all done. I think there's one cut I did beveled that I wasn't supposed to do beveled, but I think it'll be fine. But if I'm extra lucky, it was supposed to be beveled anyway. I just couldn't remember. I couldn't tell by looking at the previous ones. So, Tell you this shop vent is a lifesaver. So much better than my previous one. Okay, we're all glued up there. To the top part. Oh, I should have laid down some paper. Maybe I'll lay some down while I let this dry. Okay, it's done. If you guys on Facebook too have any questions, Feel free to ask them while I'm putting this together and hopefully I can peek away and check it often. Catch my grips. And I'll get my heat gun. It's a lifesaver too for speeding things up. drying a little bit, I'll do some more seams. And also I'm using a softer foam for the neck. I'm using the reticulated foam for a couple reasons. Um, I was kind of planning to do that the whole time, but part of the reason why I didn't do it for the first one is because of how big it was, I was going to leave like a line of L200 on the back as like a, to act as like a spine and at that scale it would definitely kind of need that for the support but um, I opted out of it for this because this is getting again my fear is that this one might actually be a little bit too small because uh, I think I realized that, that it was a printing error on the second one after I had already sized this down and was talking to the printer again so I may have shrunk it down even extra, anticipating it not to take as well as it did last time. So, you know, time will tell. So I'll switch for you guys here. There we go. But I will say, this, you know, this pattern has come together both other times very nicely. And those guys won't go to waste either. I'll repurpose them into things. Maybe I should auction them off, right? Give them away to a someone on Instagram or Facebook.
I said that there was a printing oh. error on the second one after I had already oh sized God. this down. And was... Sorry. The next thing we want is feedback. Okay. It's looking good. This is ready to go together too. There we go, we got a nice little belly again. And the sides here are coming along. Um, okay. Okay, do the, the back piece. There it is. Yeah, this is the piece that I was worried about. So yeah, this is number three of the dragon bodies if people are kind of coming in and out. Second one, first one was way too big. Second one is still a little bit too big. Again, probably a printing error, I think, that they had. Um, I couldn't tell until after it was put together. Didn't uh, fully measure it the way it might, perhaps should have. So now I hope that this one's not too small. Okay, I see some questions here on Facebook. Let me see here. Oh, we got Dan here. Yes, making a third one. Oh, God. Oh, he thinks we should turn the other ones into pinatas. Nice. If the Facebook Live indicator is over my face, that means you got to make me full screen, my man. I'm looking at it, too. It's not on mine. If you want to, maybe full screen is a little too much for here. Okay. The man himself, Disney Dan. Daniel Becker. Disney and puppetry aficionado. Thank you. 
Here we go. Another one together. We should re glue this one part. I don't like that one. Highly recommend to anybody getting a wireless heat gun. It will save you heaps of time with having a heat gun and heaps of headache without having a cord. To be honest, they're not very cheap. But if you are doing this as a business, you cannot, you cannot um, overestimate, underestimate uh, it as a tool. It is such a resource, such a tool. Okay, now I'm going to go down the back of this thing. Come together real fast. It's the benefit of it being so much smaller as well. I'm getting nervous though, it's seeming pretty small. Anyone going to the P of A, highly recommend you check that out. There's going to be some cool stuff there this year. There's cool stuff there every, well, every other year when they do it. finished this awesome book recently that I'd highly recommend. I just tweeted about it. And there's a link there if you want to buy it on Twitter under my handle, which is at Adam Krutinger. It's the biography of Theodore Geisel, who is the man who, his pen name is, no, is Dr. Seuss. So everyone knows Dr. Seuss. Theodore Geisel is his real name. Awesome book though. Man, talk about inspiring. Super inspiring uh, for any other type of artist. Highly, highly recommend that book. By Brian J. Jones. He's also the same guy who wrote the uh, Jim Henson biography. And there's some interesting connections there uh, with people that they worked with that you'll have to read the books to find out. I, uh, I finished it a couple days ago. And finishing that one made me want to uh, do the Jim Henson biography again. So now I'm about halfway through that one. Where am I going? Oh yeah, uh, that's where I'm going to say. Yeah, there we go. The steel too. I think the book's only like twenty-two dollars or something. So. Good, good deal.
soon we're going to be getting into that uh, lining technique that I was showing you guys. Really seeing it come together. Because again, it's my first time experimenting with that. So, this uh, new, not new, but first time I'm trying this new lining, this, this lining technique. Uh, blocking it by gluing it. Which is interesting to me. Figured this was the perfect project to experiment with that on, seeing as that there's such a small amount of uh, reticulated foam in this project. Now while that's drying a little bit, glue up the head so. There you go. I'm going to move my face over here just to make Disney Dan happy. Not even sure if he's still here. Oh yeah, so Dan Dan's uh said he listened to the Jim Henson book too. Yeah, it's a good one. It is phenomenal. Um, in, in listening to it again, um, I, you know, I remember the first time I listened to it, I was like, oh my God, it took, it took me a little bit of time to get into it because when Brian J. Jones starts his biographies that he works on, he starts early. He starts really early in the history. He starts with, uh, whoever the person he's, um, the, whoever the person he's doing the biography on, he starts with their grandparents. So he starts off with Jim Henson's grandparents, then going to Jim Henson's parents, then going to Jim Henson, and then, you know, then his early childhood and things like that. So, so it takes a while to get into anything that you would consider recognizable, or especially as a puppeteer, something that would you, you would apply more so to your field. Um, and then, but then I listened to the Theodore Geisel one, the Dr. Seuss um, book, and wow, he spends even more time there. It takes almost half the book to get to where, to get to the type of material you'd kind of expect, or more of the career, because if you think about it, I guess it doesn't make any sense. Because I think the reason you grab a biography often is to hear about the ins and outs of someone's career, but then, you know, it's their biography. It's their whole life. So, um, you know, makes sense that it goes, you know, much deeper. But the theater guys are one takes a while to get to some real recognizable stuff. But uh, it's worth every... It's a little shorter than the Jim Henson one. But it's worth every single... All the little nuances and stuff. One thing I want to look at is uh, I wonder where he got a lot of those quotes from for the Jim Henson one. Because he has a lot of quotes from, like, um, Paul, no, it's Paul Rudd. Oh my gosh, what am I talking about, Paul Rudd? Um, David, not David Rudd, what am I talking about? Oh my gosh, I'm completely blanking out. And, um, I was just talking, we just mentioned him in the, in the podcast we recorded a day ago, two days ago. Wow, how embarrassing. Richard Hunt. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it took me so long to 
pull out Richard Hunt. So, um, yeah, I wonder where he got a lot of those quotes from Richard Hunt from, because I'm not, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting. The uh, I noticed, in, in talking about Richard Hunt recently uh, on the podcast with some of our recent guests that aren't live yet, um, rather, the episodes aren't live, it was interesting to hear um, things that Richard Hunt had said about Jim Henson and whatnot in his career and stuff. Um, I don't know. Interested to find out. If you know, let me know. There we go. We're back to this spot. Okay. I'm going to glue that belly on. Oh, is that ready to... Give that another second. I'll glue the belly and then I'll attach that together and go back and forth and back and forth. Okay. Oh. I wish I did one thing different. I can't go back now. Guys, we are almost done already. This is really cruising.
message from my buddy Calvin over at Bird Call Channel. To check out his message in a minute. But make sure you go over and check out his page and things that he's doing. He's doing a lot of cool stuff. Let me just press these seams together a little stronger. Oh, there's the one part I forgot, his beak here. Which I think I might cut off this beak and redo it, because I think I need to use a thinner foam, just because of how small this is getting. But, we'll put it on for now. It's an easy thing to remove later. So we can get the full image. for the neck. So now these are these fancy pieces I was telling you guys about. Okay, These um, pattern pieces that what I did was I drew out the pattern on this foam, drew out all the pattern pieces, laid down a piece of black lining fabric that I wanted to use. I spray glued the fabric. Now don't use Super 77. Okay. You want to use uh, Super 74, that's just the foam adhesive, because you're gluing it to foam. So I sprayed, and if you spray closer, it, it does it more evenly, believe it or not. Uh, opposite of what you would expect. Um, glue the fabric, then I glue the back of the whole foam sheet, and I lay them down, press it down nicely. Uh, I let it sit for about five minutes or so. Actually, the longer you let it sit, the better, but I thought five minutes was fine. And then I actually sprinkled baby powder all over the whole thing so it wouldn't be as so uh, sticky while I was working on it. Um, and then I just used a razor blade and cut it out, pressed it down a little harder to make sure it went through both layers, the fabric and the foam. And there's a nice little tip for kind of aligning something uh, before you even put it together. Uh, only thing you have to do is when you go to put this together, just make sure you are uh, getting glue on the edge of the fabric as well and uh, again this is my first time uh, this technique is called blocking uh, but there's other ways to do blocking you can do blocking uh, via sewing as well I've done that again I mentioned before in my um, uh, the live stream I did on YouTube of how to make a baby shark puppet the live stream one not the edited one uh, I show it there as well but let's just start gluing it together and uh, should uh, come out pretty cool. Quite excited about it. Let me just line up these pieces. And that one goes over here. Checking my notches. There we go. Okay, so let me just start gluing this up. I'm excited to see how this turns out. I think it's going to work very nicely. Oops, oh man. It's got glue on it. That's all right. No big deal.
So I'm going to glue this into two halves, and then I'm going to put the two halves together so I get a nice, as even as I possibly can. Oh my gosh, it feels so weird to be gluing this reticulated foam together after using the L200 for the last couple days exclusively. Whoa. So here, on this side, I really want to make sure I, I butt the ends of the fabric together. Try not to have any foam coming through. Now, unfortunately, it fell asleep during my glue job so that glue line isn't great but I'll tell you that's doing exactly what I want it to do maybe I'll just let this dry just a little bit more before there we go wow oh my gosh she'll love it when a plan works out it's working out it hasn't worked out yet so far so good Oh gosh. Oh, oh, this looks great. Oh. I'll give you a close up uh, when I do the other side. Okay. Put that side together. There's a close up on that. Look at that. It's working perfect. Again, next time I'd be a little bit more uh, careful with my, my uh, gluing. But, again, it is definitely going to do what I'm... It's definitely doing what I wanted it to do. glue these two halves together then we will officially be in business
Okay. Drive this off a little bit. Elizabeth, if you're still there on, on Facebook, the book that Dan's referring to is the biography by Brian J. Jones for Jim Henson. Definitely look that up. Tracy asked, uh, is it half inch thickness foam you work with to make puppets? It depends on the puppet, depends on the size of the puppet. In this case, I am using half inch foam. In most cases for your standard ham puppet, half inch foam is very sufficient. Reasons to use a thicker foam are as if you're trying to make something much bigger and it needs a little bit more support. Okay, so to everyone at home, you can see this now. It almost looks like a corset, doesn't it? Interesting. Um, uh, I'm going to have the black, the lining on the inside. So once I turn this, um, we're not going to be able to see it anymore. So, but there you go. There it is. Once we glue this to the body, we'll really get the idea of how that works. I just hope, and it looks like, oh gosh, I was so worried that this neck might be too thin for the arm of the puppeteer. It's looking like it's going to be good. I may have to shave down a little bit of the foam from the outside just to slim it down a little bit, but for as far as getting your hand in there, it looks like it's going to be uh, pra practically perfect in every way. Okay. Wow. Oh my gosh. Look how nice that is. Oh. Okay. That is slick. Uh, oh, we glued this a while ago. I forgot to glue it. Why don't you remind me? I guess you're supposed to remind me. That's why you're here. I think it's good, though. Yeah, it's holding. If you wait way too long, you'll lose the, uh, the tackiness, and it won't stick together. But it is right at the edge. Well, like I said, there's a good chance we're going to replace this piece anyway. It's got a good connection there. Okay, now I'm just going to attach this beak to the head, the neck to the body, the body to the, the head, the body to the neck, the neck to the head, the head to the beak. That's what I got to do. Okay, so that's glued. This to the body. So one thing you might notice that's different about this pattern from the last stream that I did is this whole body is shorter now and the neck part is longer. Um, I decided I wanted the softer foam to come down lower so I just did some fancy uh, pattern tracing and pre-connected them rather than gluing it. Just figured it'd save time and be stronger and plethora of reasons. Man, this is... This is... beating my own expectations. Dan's going to be very happy, I think, with how this is on the inside.
Okay. Um, I'll wait on that for now. Now Rebecca asked about if I glued a lining to the inside. I did, and the best way to uh, really go back and watch this video when this is over, and um, you'll see that whole, I explain the whole process. All right, we're nearing the end. Fancy now. Let me switch cameras here. For you guys on Facebook. There we go. Line up the. That is the front, right? It's important. If I put the head on sideways, it would be really bad. Oh, oh my gosh. It is perfect. There's no entrance hole yet, so I can't have trouble pushing from the inside. There's no entrance hole because this is going to be like an illusion puppet. So it's going to kind of go into the side. So I want to just make sure that I line it up just right. So I'm not going to do that until I measure like on somebody's body. Wow, look at that. Now this is ready to catch here. the beak a little bit too. Figured I could always shave it down. Just stretched it like a bench or so. Alright, and we're almost there. Look at that. Oh my gosh. I think, I think, maybe, I might have to tell Dan that he's just borrowing this puppet and that I need it back because, oh my gosh, I don't think I've ever been so in love with just a foam structure before and not even a finished puppet. Because sometimes when it's just foam, I'm still like, ah, man, I hope this comes together. But I don't think I've ever been so excited for a foam when it's just in the foam form. Okay, one last little peek on the inside for the people at home. You can look inside of it there. Pretty cool looking, huh? Coming along nicely in the people on Facebook world. You can look inside. Checking it out. Looking good. 
We'll do a scale test in a second too, once his head's on. See, after this is on, we have to do a movie night with my wife. I'm excited about it. What should we watch? Let me know. Anything new on Netflix or whatever? We just watched A Quiet Place uh, last night, which that was pretty cool. And they're actually filming right now A Quiet Place 2 right in Buffalo right here. Right here. What are the chances? Nothing happens in Buffalo. Okay. Hey, I might even keep this bottom lip this time too. I always talked about cutting it off, but now it's lined and it fits and it's nice. Wow, holy cow, man. This is actually working. And it couldn't be, I don't think it could possibly be better for my expectations. Wow, okay, and there we are. Let me do the comparison, the size comparison to Okay, I'll do all the way down the line, right? Uh, let me just... Yeah, let me... Okay. So this is from the biggest one, the one we did the first build, okay? That we didn't do together. So I'm going to back up a little more so you can see better. Side to side. And then I built the second one, which is this one. Smaller, and then we have our smallest one. So the whole family together. Yeah, it's, it's hard to tell. Uh, so big difference there. These ones they actually look pretty close to similar size. But I'll tell you. Let me put them next to each other like this. Oh yeah, look at that. That's like a five-inch difference. Yeah, definitely. This is our. This is our size. What's the strangest thing is when it's under my arm, if I look at my pictures, they all look like they're about the same size. But we are in the money with this guy here. Um, I think that's it for now, guys. I gotta go get to my movie. I may post a picture or something in a couple minutes, too. But, thanks for hanging out. And I will, ooh, I will see you guys soon. And then Instagram is off. And we're still live on Facebook. Bye-bye.